Uh, welcome back to a, another quick tips and tricks video. I say quick, this one might be a little bit of a lengthy one today. Uh, I'll try and go through everything as quick as I can. Uh, for those of you that might be new players, um, you may want to go and check out my tips and tricks playlist before you look at this build in too much detail. Um, not trying to be a, a, a jerk, um, elitist or anything, but this has got quite a lot of other little systems in that are featured in my tips and tricks playlist. So I'll put a little link up in the uh, top right for you to have a look at that. Um, but just to give you the TLDR, uh, what we're basically looking at here today is a oil to natural gas build. Now, this is by no means the smallest version of this build. Um, this is probably the more complicated way of doing it, truth be told, but I thought I'd show this today to show you the different steps involved in going from crude oil to the finished product, which is natural gas. And it's a, roughly about a five step process. Um, again, uh, I will give uh, links as we go through to other little elements of this build that I might have covered in different playlists or different videos, um, and I'll link those in the top right corner, so look out for those coming through. Um, so, just to give you the, the basic, as I say, the TLDR really, what we're doing with this build, what we're trying to achieve, is to take our source of crude oil over here, and end up with natural gas over here. And to do this, we need to go through a few different stages. So, first things first, we have our crude oil comes into this room here, and it comes in through this vent. I'll go through all the piping and stuff in a moment just to show you exactly what's happening. But the crude oil will enter through here, and it gets boiled into petroleum. And again, I'll link you this build up in the top right, um, as this is a video we've covered recently. Now, the petroleum, once it's boiled, will sit here, and basically will get dumped into this second chamber. Um, as and when we need some more petroleum in here to be turned into natural uh, sour gas. Now, sour gas <clears throat> has to be condensed. Sour gas is what we now get when we burn petroleum. It used to just be oil to petroleum to natural gas. Well, now we have to have another step in the middle, and that's sour gas. Petroleum, when it reaches 500 and... I think it's about 540 degrees... Um, 538.9, so it's about 541 it will start boiling off turns into sour gas. Sour gas is a bit of an interesting um, element in the fact that it's not very conductive. It's very difficult to um, transfer heat to it. Um, and sour gas needs to be cooled to minus 161.5, so about minus 163 degrees normally, in order to change to its next state. And its next state is liquid methane. All right. Now, liquid methane, as you can see here, uh, evaporates at minus 161.5 degrees and freezes at minus 182 degrees. So there's, there's a reasonable um, window there to stop it from freezing, but it, it does boil again very quickly if you don't, if you don't um, move it out, either out of the build or, or keep it cool beyond that point. So this condenses at 100, minus 161 and this will evaporate at minus 161. So you can see the quandary here. Now, there's a lot of stuff in this build. I will have to go through it systematically because otherwise it'll be, what am I looking at? Um, so I will go through it all in a minute, but I'm just explaining the basic premise at the minute. Now, when you go from sour gas to um, liquid methane, there is another element that's thrown into the mix and it's a waste element at the moment. It's something we can't really do much with and that is sulfur. And I'll just drag a bit of this out of here. I am in debug just to show you this. Um, this is sulfur, solid sulfur. Um, solid sulfur is quite an interesting material. It's not got the worst thermal conductivity. Um, it, it changes state into a gas if you boil it. It can turn into a liquid if you cool it again. Um, it's an interesting um, element, but at the moment it has no use in the game. We can't do anything with it. I'm sure in the future it's going to be used for more interesting stuff, but for now, in the current build, which is the Space Industry Update uh, 291640, you can't do sod all with it. So... It's a waste element, and basically for every kilo of sour gas that you convert, you'll get around 330 grams of sulfur. So it is a bit of a nasty a nasty element in the fact that we lose a third of our sour gas when we turn it to liquid methane. But that is better than the alternative, which is a um, uh, basically just using the petroleum in its raw form. So even though we lose a third of it, we still get... You know an awful lot of power out of this and i'll go through that more now so just to explain what's going on behind the scenes we've got a lot of liquid piping coming through here but it's actually very simple so we've got two cooling loops coming through this chamber here and this is our radiant piping loop so the idea is that our petroleum will boil in here 
So our crude oil boils into petroleum. Our petroleum sits here behind this door and then gets dropped through this mechanical airlock and dropped onto the aqua tuna. At this point, this aqua tuna's job is to boil the petroleum into sour gas. And it does that, as I say, when it reaches about 540 odd degrees, okay? The sour gas then bubbles up through here, and I've got a couple of different little loops through the system here, just to take some of the heat out of it. So firstly, I've got a little um, transfer plate here, which is made out of metal tiles, made out of tungsten, and that will transfer the heat to our steam turbine as and when we need it. So I've got a little bit of automation here, I've got a, a thermo sensor set to below 270 degrees, that then toggles on a filter gate and a buffer gate, basically just to keep this door open for a few seconds to transfer some of the heat through here as and when it's needed. If it isn't needed, then the gas just passes through here and it'll probably warm up these tiles to balance out the temperature. Uh, but if I show you, um, the turbine does kick on periodically to give us a bit of boost of power. Um, then running through the room, we've got a little bit of conveyor, but I won't explain that yet. I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, the sour gas then comes around here and hits our radiator. And through our radiator, we're pumping super coolant. Okay, so there is a little bit of space materials needed for this. If you've not fully cracked into space yet, you're going to struggle doing a build that's boiling oil or petroleum because you do need some of the better materials, ideally. Um, but through our radiator, we've got super coolant. We've got two separate bands here, so they're different temperatures if you look. This one currently is a little bit warmer, it's minus 162. This one here is minus 165 at the minute, and it will fluctuate a little bit. Um, cooling this super coolant, we've got these two aqua tuners that are obviously boiling our oil and our petroleum. Uh, this loop, if we look, goes through here. So this is this band, and it goes into a reservoir, and then the reservoir dumps it back into the aqua tuner. And this loop here is from this aqua tuner. And this one has a little bit of a dog leg here, where it cools the back of our um, cooling plate at the bottom. So we end up, I've got a bit of granite pipe and then I've got a bit of gold, um, gold and thermium radiant pipe. Now you don't need to use thermium, but thermium's pretty, pretty badass in fairness. Um, but we've got a bit of gold, bit of thermium. I think I've built this out of all sorts to be fair, but mostly this radiator here is very important. So these bits are thermium. For a lot of the other radiators, I've just built them out of gold and most of the piping is built out of ceramic as well. So you've not got too much insulate. Um, to worry about. Insulate is still a bit of a nightmare material to, to make, so a couple of the essential bits of pipe I will just explain are built out of insulation, okay? So some of this stuff down here is insulation, but then it'll switch to ceramic as soon as it's not really needed. So insulation, insulation, and then the rest of it's all ceramic outside here, okay? So as I say, the gas will then come down here, it hits this radiator and it starts cooling, okay? So our super coolant radiator is going to chill this out, we've got sour gas at this point, is at 274 degrees. As soon as it hits this point, it's at 100, minus 140, minus 150, minus 151, and so on, until it gets down here. And what will happen is eventually it will create liquid methane. All right. Now, down here we have a hydrosensor, and that's controlling our liquid methane coming into the, the chamber down here, because we need to boil this liquid methane once we've collected it. Because liquid methane itself, we can collect it with a liquid pump and put it into a separate chamber if we wanted. Um, but in order to get it into natural gas, it needs to warm up a little bit. So our liquid methane gets dropped through these doors here. It's collected and it just sits here for a minute. And then in this room, we've actually got some conveyor rails. So behind these pumps, there's some conveyor rails. These conveyor rails are sort of serving two purposes. At the moment, um, they are picking up all the sulfur from this chamber here. Okay, so the sulfur will accumulate over time and we end up with quite a bit of it in this build um, or in any natural gas boiler build really, you'll end up with quite a lot of sulfur as a byproduct. We have a sweeper arm here that's on a clock sensor and for a period of the day this sweeper arm will collect our sulfur, put it into this conveyor loader and that then sends it into our conveyor line here. All right, Above the conveyor line we've got a dropper, so this conveyor sweeps, uh, this conveyor um, radiator if you like goes all the way through this room and all this is basically doing is warming up this gas a little bit so that we can warm up this liquid methane just a bit in order to get it to boil away and when we boil it away we get a massive amount of gas in the room so we're currently sat at 196 kilos of natural gas in this room at the minute um, which obviously needs to be pumped away when this boils we'll get another big surge of it because obviously this being a liquid um a liquid that can turn straight into our end product we get a shitload of it when this boils off so you know these three tiles here as you can see some just boiled away then um we'll get a ton just off these three tiles boiling away so we're now at 200 kilos of natural gas in the room 
Um, but yeah, the radiator itself, the conveyor rails, I basically wanted to use the sulfur for something other than just leaving it to sit there. So um, the radiator goes through here, goes back up this way, and then we put the radiator that's got the sulfur on it back into the build a little bit, just to interact with some of the sour gas a little bit. And this warms the sulfur a little bit, like a tiny amount. <laughs> so currently our sulfur's at minus 100 and 168, uh, sorry, minus 68, minus 67. That then carries on this way and goes into a receptacle with a dropper. And again, I've got a video on how to do a sweeper dropper if, uh, if you click the little link up here. Um, that basically enables the conveyor to keep keep moving, albeit in a slightly janky way, it is cycling. So this is trying to move sulfur from this compactor, uh, this container to here. Um, an automation signal, signal toggles it on and off before it can do that, so it drops the sulfur. And then the sulfur comes down here where it meets another sweeper that just loads up the, uh, the rail itself. And behind here I've got a little conveyor bridge, it's hard to see, but what it's basically allowing is for this to be the main line that feeds the radiator. And then if there's no sulfur on here, this will then toggle on and, and fill up the, the radiator for me. And again, that's just to boil away my natural gas a little bit, boil away my methane so that we get these big hits of natural gas in here. Um, so that's that's the majority of the stuff that's interacting with the build up here. We do have a steam turbine, as I say, the steam turbine is kind of doing two jobs at the minute. It's taking some of the raw heat out of our sour gas. So if it gets too warm up here, this switch turns on and transfers some of the heat to our turbine, which gives us a bit of power. Um, and then we also have a little door down here, which is to help condense our sensor here. And again, that will all be explained in the petroleum build. Um, but basically, if this isn't a liquid, this door will close, transfer some of the heat so that this can condense again. It's a little bit of super coolant in there, basically. Um, through the build, we also have a little radiator, which has just had a little hit of oil. This is supplying the oil to our petroleum boiler. Um, I do have oil sat, I think it's about 115 degrees, so it's about what you can find in your oil biome, basically. I just spawned in some oil to I'm in debug. Um, this gets preheated a little bit through the room, so it comes through here, hits this little bit of granite pipe, then hits this gold radiant pipe, and by the time it gets down here, it should be about between 250, 260 degrees or something. There is a lot of um, fluctuation in this build, so one cycle it might produce more gas than the previous cycle, so I've tried to work on a, an average basis based over a lot of cycles, which is why we're at cycle 195. It's taken a long time to tinker around and get this somewhere near balanced. Um, so yeah, that's that's the essence of the build, as I say. That's all the heating and cooling that's coming into the room. As you can see, we've preheated our oil a little bit there, so that's now 260 degrees. That'll get dumped into this chamber and at which point this is boiling off. We've got a sensor here that's saying, if you're below 225 kilos, I need more oil. Um, that should have now toggled off, which means there's no more oil coming through here. The pipe will empty, and then that's our petroleum that's gonna be sat here ready to be boiled in a minute. Um, our petroleum down here is now at 530 degrees, so in a minute this is gonna boil off. When it does, we'll get another hit of oil through the door, and that'll continue the cycle. Now, the reason I've got pumps in both the top left and the bottom right, I wanted to show the different stages. I wanted to show, um, there you go, our petroleum's just boiled away now. Once this little bit from this tile goes, this door will open, we get more petroleum. Yeah, I wanted to show the different stages. I wanted to show that, you know, you can just have, you know, a bank of aqua tuners and go straight from oil to sour gas to, you know, a little cooling loop to make your natural gas. But I did want to explain what's basically happening here. I do have some pumps up here in case we have any of this liquid methane boil away. Um, and that gets trapped up here. So we've got a little band of natural gas. I've got a couple of airflow tiles, some temp shift plates, just to balance out some of the temperature between the sour gas and the natural gas. Um, and then I've got a little bit of automation. We've got a gaseous element sensor on a filter gate that goes into an AND gate. And then I've got an ATMO sensor on a filter gate that goes into an AND gate to give the signal for this door. So only if I am above 15 kilos of natural gas up here and the atmosphere is natural gas, does this door open and then these pumps are just on a simple atmo sensor okay now i've tried to make this build so that it can be powered very easily at the moment it's powered by four natural gas gens the entirety of this build is powered by four natural gas gens plus the additional power generated by the steam turbine which is obviously intermittent it fluctuates a little bit but this is this has been running now for about 70 cycles with just this power grid it was originally connected to an external grid but i've removed that now and this just seems to be running absolutely fine um, so this is all that's required to power it 
Um, I have collected all the different resources that we get from the, the actual powering element as well. So we've got the carbon dioxide that we get from our natural gas gens, that's been collected in here. We've got the water that's again emitted by our natural gas gens, that's collected in here. And then we're also getting polluted oxygen, which is collected in here. And it's not a lot, but I just thought I'd show you the other elements that you get from this as well. Um, and then, yeah, the majority of the natural gas itself gets dumped into this um, overpressurized tank here. And then a little bit gets bypassed into our natural gas gens just to keep them running. And that's it basically. Um, this build generates, it does fluctuate a little bit, but it runs between 2 kilos a second and 2.8 kilos a second. Um, depending on at what point our gas is being dumped into the room. So you're looking at probably about 2.5 kilos um, of natural gas produced. Um, it does produce quite a lot of sulfur as a byproduct. It's kind of annoying that we don't really have a use for it yet, uh, but I am putting that to good use at least in balancing out the temperature of the room, i.e. we're using it to boil our liquid methane and we're also cooling down our sour gas a little bit as well. Um, so I'll attach the save file for you. Um, hopefully it will all make sense. Uh, I do have one other little piece, piece of automation up here just to explain. This is a not gate so that if these pumps are running, these pumps don't run. Um, it toggles between them basically. So um, you can see, you know, it, when, when these are running down here, we're getting a constant two kilos second of, uh, of natural gas, uh, but it will build a little surplus. So if you were building this yourself, you'd want to toggle this off so that all these pumps could potentially run at once. Uh, but I hope that makes sense. Again, the save file will be there for you to have a play with. This isn't the most super refined mega build. This is just a proof of concept, really, just to show you how to go from oil to petroleum to sour gas to liquid methane to natural gas. In two different ways um so hopefully it's uh, something that triggers some interest me and mex were playing with this till the wee hours of this morning having a bit of a play and we both had very different ways of approaching the, the same problem so um i'm sure you could come up with a much smaller refined version this is just what i came up with and this is powerful enough to, to i think it will power around 28 fully running natural gas gens um again based on the average that it does fluctuate a little bit we do get a, a roughly 600 kilos between 600 and 650 kilos dumped in here and it will either be dumped three or four times a cycle depending on how it hits you know at the time of the day so it's a bit hard to get a uh, an exact figure on what this outputs but have a play with it yourself in debug if you have any refinements or any tweaks that you do and it makes it work infinitely better let me know uh, if you have your own versions then come and share us uh, share us your builds on discord and uh, yeah it's a really interesting build to me i hadn't really um I hadn't really played with this too much until recently. I did a little Twitch stream on it, and I found it a really interesting process. So hopefully you'll uh, you'll enjoy tinkering with it yourselves as well. So yeah, much love, guys. Take it easy. Bye, bye.